You guys requested it, and I'm bringing it to you. You guys wanted to see Ryzen 5 overclocked against KB Lake Overclock. This is the battle of the mid $200 CPUs, and let's find out which one is the best bang for your buck for less than $250. So first things first, what you'll notice on both this slide and the next slide is that the memory is at 2133. There's a reason for this. My B350 board cannot overclock the memory. I'm not sure if there's not enough settings. I tried higher voltage. I wasn't really overly worried about it, but easiest CPU overclock I've ever messed with. I changed two things. The multiplier or the frequency at 3900, CPU voltage at 1.35 volts. I'm running on that B350 Pro 4 board from ASRock, Corsair H100i version two, and the EVGA GTX 1080 for the win at 2025 megahertz core clock. So that's how I have this one set up. Really very few changes made. Now, let's take a look at what I had to do for the KB Lake CPU. Going back to my Devil's Canyon days, I remembered that you had to tweak several different settings. So first things first is I up the CPU ratio, the 45, the CPU agent ratio, which I believe is very similar to the cache ratio on the older boards, the 42, CPU core voltage to 1.3 volts, the SA voltage 1.15 and the VCCI to 1.11. Now, as soon as I dialed in and the temperatures were good, I didn't really mess with it anymore. I probably could adjust those down a little bit, but really I just wanted to bring the overclock benchmarks and if it wasn't overheating, I was cool with that. So, let's start. Let's take a look at these overclock benchmarks and let's see who the king is going to be. The very first benchmark we're going to look at is a CPU benchmark, Ashes of the Singularity, the CPU test. Now mind you, both these CPUs are overclocked by 700 megahertz over their base clock. The R5 1600 at 1080p scored 32.2 FPS and only gave a 0.4 FPS at 31.8 at 1440p. Very similar story for the i5 7600K, which went 29.6 FPS at 1080p and 29.5 FPS at 1440p on extreme settings. Very, very, very similar performance, but the R5 1600 posed a 10% lead. I don't think we expected this. Let's take a look at the GPU benchmark for this game. It's clear that in the GPU benchmark, the GTX 1080 for the win was the bottleneck here. They both scored within like one or two percent of the other. So the R5 1600 squeaked by a little bit of a lead. The i5 7600K scored like one, one and a half FPS behind. 1080p, they both scored a little bit higher than 1440p, but definitely in this scenario on extreme settings, the GPU was definitely the bottleneck here. Let's take a look at some other games. So there's a little bit of a story here. The i5-7600K at 1440p squeaked out maybe a 1 or 2 percent win. At 1080p, however, it pulled about 5 FPS ahead and 140 FPS you're looking at 2 to 3 percent margin of victory there. However, I don't have this on this graph, but the lows for the R5-1600 are 105 and the highs were about 190 versus 75 and 230. So a smaller swing means that the overall experience for the user is going to be better despite the averages being lower. So the i5-7600K did win this one, but I would go to say that it doesn't deliver better experience. Let's keep going. Here we see the R5-1600 have an impressive win. Clearly 1440p is a lot closer, there's more of a GPU bottleneck, but at 1080p there is like 11 to 13% win over the i5-7600K. So here we see that some of these newer titles that are definitely multi-threaded will perform better on Ryzen because the IPC difference just isn't that much like it used to be. Let's take a look though at Cinebench here. Now this test didn't surprise anybody. Well, it didn't surprise me at the least. The R5-1600 was going to win this one hands down. But what was interesting is the i5-7600K gained a whole whopping 62 points at a 700 megahertz base overclock, 
whereas the R5 1600 gained 182 points, three times that with a 700 megahertz overclock. And we didn't even touch the memory. I alluded that earlier, we were having trouble with that. But this is really impressive how much of a workhorse this R5 chip is, especially compared to the Intel flagship at the same roughly 200 to 250 dollar price point so the question is is what did this accomplish what is the conclusion what do i recommend i definitely recommend the r5 1600 temperatures across the board for both chips were fine upper 60s lower 70s no real concern i did have some issues with my previous board the asus x370 pro board because that's where I can get some memory overclocking. This ASRock B350 board, I cannot get the memory to go anywhere. So memory overclocking is probably not gonna happen for me, and I do apologize, but other than those two things, I'm very happy with this Ryzen chip. It's cheaper than the i5. It comes with a decent cooler that you can probably do some mild overclocking with. The boards, the B350 boards, are significantly cheaper. If you go to Micro Center, you can get some of these boards for less than $60. I don't personally see a scenario where I would recommend somebody to get an i5-6700K for a gaming CPU. I would probably say it's still a little bit early on in the Ryzen cycle for me to recommend a brand new builder to it, but an experienced builder, I don't see it. My tests are showing at stock and overclocked that the R5 1600 is trading blows with the 7600K in single threaded applications and in multi threaded it's running away with it. I don't think you should pay more and get less overall experience. And the experience gaming, higher lows, a little bit lower highs, but the overall experience is a bit smoother. So those are my thoughts. I like the chip. I like the platform. Still some issues, but I still like it. Next video, I can't do RAM overclocking. I apologize, guys, but I will be doing some WoW videos. You guys love my WoW videos. You want to see how WoW well Ryzen does in WoW. So I'll probably be doing some benchmarking and some live streaming just for you guys. But if you liked the video, like it. If you disliked it, it's cool. You can dislike it. If you want to purchase anything we use in this video, Go in the comment section below, both the hardware and the software, there are links below how to get them. But thank you guys very much for tuning in. This is Steve from PC Budget Solutions, and I will see you later on down the road.